Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you so much for joining me today in this video. I want to make you guys aware of a story that the mainstream media is definitely suppressing right now, and that is that federal agents were sicked on the whistleblower who exposed the transgender surgeries that were happening on children at the Texas Children's Hospital. There's some really, really scary and nasty details about this that you need to know about and be made aware of. So please stay with me for the entirety of this video. I really think that you're going to get value out of this. This is a powder keg, and we need to be aware of the things that are going on because it really signals just how how much power that the nexus between the medical industrial complex and the federal government has gotten, how weaponized medicine has become, and how it is an existential threat not only to freedom-loving healthcare providers, but to every individual who values their sovereignty and who desires to seek medical care. So the Daily Wire released an article, I think yesterday, and this is how I originally found out about it. But in the Daily Wire, it referenced the essentially the series of events that have led up to what I'm going to speak about. So the individual in question, the whistleblower whose identity has been made known, and he's come out publicly now at this point, is Dr. Itan Haim. And Dr. Itan Haim, he's a young man. He's 33 years old. And what happened was essentially he saw that in direct contravening of Texas law that the Texas Children's Hospital, hospital, despite telling everyone that they had ceased doing these butcherous surgeries on children, like double mastectomies on children, um, inserting hormone blockers, just wicked, absolutely wicked things that they were doing to children. They had put out the front that they had ceased doing this, but yet they were still doing it behind the scenes, A, and then B, making a ton of money about it, and then C, the physicians who were doing these procedures were bragging about it at grand rounds and lecturing about it and giving other other physicians pointers and how-tos as to how to funnel gender-confused and gender-dysphoric children into this same system and how they used an algorithm to to take these children who needed psychological help and then capitalize off of them and profit off of them, creating out of their confusion and pain, lifelong medical establishment consumers, perpetual patients. And so Dr. Heim talks about this in a very important interview. It's about an hour long. I've watched the entirety of it. You should do the same. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. But Dr. Heim talks about this, and there are several key points that I took away from this that you really, really should pay attention to. Number one is the fact that the feds use psychological warfare on him to intimidate him into, into silence. And ultimately, in my opinion, every person part of this conspired to violate his civil rights. And oh, by the way, there's a U.S. code about this, which makes doing such a thing a crime. One of the things that Dr. Haim noted, which I think is quite rightly noted, is that the culture of medicine shifted drastically. And he makes a direct connection between the mindset and the power grabbing of the COVID years and how it directly dovetailed into the transgender mutilating ideology that now has become the standard operating norm and rallying cry for the American Medical Association and several of these alphabet soup organizations who routinely pour lots of money like millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars into silencing their opponents, silencing critics who would dare to offer a contrary argument such as, hmm, maybe biology is scientific and not ideological. Maybe you don't get just to decide if you're a woman or a man just transiently. And oh, by the way, if you screw that up and you start inter interdicting into that process chemical blockers, then not only are you committing a crime against children, it is child abuse, but also you are robbing that individual of having a full life and instead creating in them some type of torturous creature that has its primary allegiance to the medical establishment to feed at the chemical blockers, to feed at the antidepressants that invariably it's going to need. It's just, it's wickedness. And the thing is that he directly correlated this mindset and this power shift to the COVID years, which we've known about and we've talked about extensively on this channel. And in order to understand, you have to understand what happened with COVID because the changes that occurred are what allowed the transgender ideology to proliferate and what allowed doctors to be able to do this to children on a large scale. And I believe it can be simplified to really two important things. First was this prioritization of ideology over evidence. And then second was the censorship of anyone who questioned that ideology with the presentation of evidence. 
One of the things that I found was particularly telling at about the 50 minute mark of the interview was that Dr. Haim noted that all of these allegations were baseless. Health and Human Services federal agents showed up to his house the day that he was supposed to graduate from medical school, a day that his family had come into town for, that he and his wife surely had been planning for and hoping for, etc. They, they picked their timing, and they always do. The, <laughs> don't play ball with the feds. They always pick their timing, and they picked it to intimidate him and to try and silence him ultimately to get him to shut up and accused him of things that had no factual support, no basis whatsoever, accused him of violating HIPAA, which if you look at everything that was uh, leaked in, in the original post from the journalist who interviewed him, all of the information that was leaked and posted, whether it was scheduled surgery schedules or whatever, it had the identifying information for patients that was blacked out. It couldn't be seen. So this is something, by the way, that we routinely do in medicine. Any healthcare provider nurse, doctor, whoever, who is part of ongoing education, clinical education, case study review is part of this. And in every case study review, if you're evaluating patients, you're going to have information about the patients, but for instance, their name and their date of birth and identifying features about them, all of these things will be scrubbed to protect their identity. And all of this had been done. So the accusation that he had been acting in, in defiance of HIPAA protocol, this is all BS. It's total BS. They trumped this thing up to try and intimidate intimidate this man and then used and weaponized the federal government's long arm of justice, i.e. the legal system, and all of the money that you and I, the taxpayers, are forced to fork over each year. That's what Dr. Heim, essentially, that's the purse that he has been forced to fight against. Our money that has been taken, that's what's being used to bankrupt him in his legal defense. So the feds, they do this. And why are they doing this right now? Because the Biden administration's people are in full tilt retard mode, trying to gear up for the election. They can't justify the position because they've got, they are attempting to get us into more foreign wars. Their economy has absolutely tanked. They have an abysmal rating when it comes to approval. And so the only way that they can try and justify themselves is to put themselves up as some type of beacon of success for the, the rallying flag of every progressive whack job darling ideology that there is. So they decided to crucify this man. Now, when it comes right down to it, friends, the man is obviously taking a stand for what is right. And he put, he was willing to put his money where his mouth was to the point where effectively they have wiped through all of their savings, what, the, what little they had, obviously, because it costs money to go to medical school and it costs money to work. And then the day that he's about to graduate, they show up at his door. What I wanted to drive home to you guys in this video is not only do we have a serious problem from an institutional standpoint... But everything that our founding fathers feared about the nexus of government and its overreach in our life, and not just that, our founding fathers were concerned about a, stand, a standing army oppressing the people. But what we have seen with the growth of the federal government and all of these metastasizing, malignant growths and outgrowths of the federal government is that these people exist to perpetuate A, their own power, and B, the suppression of their political enemies. And then see the victimization of anyone who would stand in their way or call them on what they're doing. They must be checked. They must be reined in. But, as Dr. Haim notes, how can you possibly defend yourself against authority that is abusing its power? Trying to get an arm of the federal government to police itself is like trying to get the prisoners to run the prison. Like, it's not going to work. And so we have to be able, effectively, to self-select out of this. Now, as I've said, there's a legal fund that's been set up to assist the Haim family in the defense, in their defense. Uh, because the feds, this is the thing, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like, the feds have an inexhaustible resource amount. From everything that they've stolen from us, they're using now to victimize a man who is standing for the rights of children. Think about that. So I wanted to share this video with you all, not only to make you aware of what's going on, but also to give you options so that you can help. Because when it comes right down to it, if they will silence this doctor, if they will make out of him a political scapegoat and are willing to ruin his life and his family's lives and bankrupt them and to drag his good name through the mud because he didn't, A, because he spoke out about Texas law being violated, and then B, because he didn't want children butchered and mutilated for profit. 
If they're willing to do this to him, they're going to do it to anybody. They're going to do it to anybody. And unless an example is made of them, meaning that a legal defense for Dr. Heim is made, they're going to continue to do this all over the country. And they won't stop with doctors. It'll be nurses. It'll be EMTs. It'll be paramedics. It'll be respiratory therapists. It'll be every single person. And they started it during COVID. But this is now, they're, they're circling the wagons. They're circling the wagons on their power. And thankfully, they have a good legal defense team that has decided to take up the case. And it's really, I think, going to end up being a, a case study in and of itself for stopping the feds in their tracks. In my opinion, every single person who conspired to do this to this man, from the local level, meaning the county attorney, and all the way up to the to the federal, federal agents that showed up at his door, they need to be charged with conspiracy to violate civil rights. If you would like to learn more about Dr. Hines' story, then I definitely recommend that you watch the full documentary. And I'll put a link to that. Also, if you want to support the family and be part of the Legal Defense Fund, I've already donated. And let me encourage you to do the same. This is very, very important. And this is a very deserving cause. The man, the man needs help. And we have an opportunity, particularly if you're a healthcare provider who has a conscience and who is a Bible-believing healthcare provider. You know exactly where this is going. They are trying to drive out every single person who has a conscience because ultimately they know that they can use healthcare to destroy people and they're doing it for political gain. So friends, important video. It's a powerful video and I hope that it blessed you and I hope that you can share this video and get the word out. Please share this with every healthcare provider that you know. This video needs to go viral. This story needs to be known and be spoken about in, in homes all over the country because if they will do this to Dr. Haim, they'll do it to your doctor, your family doctor, the nurses in your lives. They'll do it to anybody and they have the power and the money from the federal government behind them to keep people tied up in court and to bankrupt them forever. So unless we stand against this now, this is going to spread like a cancer. The Biden administration must be stopped. They need to be defeated. And this is the year to do it. I hope the video blessed y'all. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off and I'll see y'all later. Bye.